What I'm holding here is a piece of history. It was written in uh, 1974, 75 time frame by my predecessor, Bernard Sallet, and uh, really is a roadmap for how we've grown to be successful from a very early start with not a lot of financials to a very successful trade association. and I've been learning about robots. Yes, robots, and particularly about the very important part they play in industry. And we'll begin right over here with a robot that meets the most often used and very official sounding definition of industrial robot. Are you ready for this? Industrial robot. All right, would you welcome Joe Engelberger? We can program the machine to do a commercial. <laughs> The list of tasks that industrial robots can do, and do so permanently well, is growing all the time. The World Robot Conference. The event has become the biggest and the most international. There's so many more applications in so many more industries that we've never seen before. What about the future for automation? There seems to be no limit. Perhaps automation can lead to a better life for all of us. I know what I think. How about you? So, can you believe it, 50 years of A3? It's amazing. Uh, you think about 50 years and it sounds like a big number, but it went by so fast. It really did. I mean, I'm amazed at how quickly 50 years goes by. Yeah. You know, it's like uh, crazy that we're, we're here this big of an anniversary. What was it like for you when we broke away from SME? That had to be terrifying. <laughs> it, it was uh, a big decision on my part. With a family and uh, a future I thought I had at SME, I wasn't sure in the beginning, but something told me this could be a good thing. RA started in 1974. It was a struggle in the beginning. There was a technical group within the Society of Manufacturing Engineers dealing with robotics and automation. SME being a well-known large individual member society, took on the task of uh, identifying robotics as a future business. We ended up with a meeting in Detroit in a smoke-filled room with about seven or eight competitors, companies like Unimation, IBM, Bendix, and General Electric. These were guys that never met before. It was the formative stage of uh, getting the association established, and the father of the robotics industry, Joe Engelberger, finally came on board, and uh, we started the association. Thanks to SME, they put up some seed money and staff, and uh, we officially separated in 1983, and that's when I became uh, the head of RA staff. Don was a tremendous leader. He put together a great team of people to start the association. Don was the person with the vision for the Robot Industry Association and then the subsequent associations. Don was a master communicator, connecting up the RIA with its partners like the groups in Japan, the groups in Europe, groups in U.S. to work together for the benefit of the industry. If they can get in a room and share some of the struggles and accomplishments that they've had over the years, you learn from that. It really did provide a home for an industry that was you know, very young in its, in its beginning, but now is uh, mature and see all kinds of things moving towards automation and robotics that might not have been foreseen you know, 50 years ago. When RIA was formed, and in, robotics was supposed to be the next industrial revolution, there were a lot of robots being purchased by the automotive industry. They were the largest end user customer. Shortly after, they canceled a whole bunch of orders. Whether they were dissatisfied or whether they couldn't find the right applications or it was too complicated. People just completely weren't aware of what they were, what they could do, and uh, the right way to use them. The skill set among the people who might support them wasn't really developed at that time. Ultimately, that led a lot of robotics companies to exit the industry. 
And that was a major challenge for our trade association. And a lot of people doubted whether the industry would be able to survive. Through the efforts of the RIA and the member companies, slowly the technology became better known and it started to find uses in other industries, in other ways. We launched a uh, machine vision association in 1984. Over the years, we added several other associations, um, motion control and artificial intelligence. It brought together all of the different supplier companies which could deliver the technology. Both the companies that would provide the human capital of people that knew how they operated and could work with them, and then also the companies that physically made the robots themselves. People would begin to understand that they could make their businesses operate more efficiently and more effectively using robot technology. We did some major things like getting industry to report their statistics every month, and it became a benchmark for the industry to, to be the source for those business statistics. The idea of moving from hydraulics to electric motor robots, and that really was a, a technical breakthrough for the industry. And more companies came in and, and developed new robot equipment doing new applications. We're the largest trade association in the world focused on robotics, machine vision, AI, motion control, and related automation technologies. That's our sole purpose in life, is to encourage companies to adopt these technologies and teach them how to do that successfully. I remember when we talked about merging the separate associations under one umbrella. And it took us some time to get there, to get to this 1A3. From my perspective, it's ultimately worked out that, you know, we're larger than we've ever been. The fact that companies can join just one entity now, and I think that's really allowed us to bring in, you know, big companies like Microsoft and Google and Intel and Amazon. You've got to be pretty proud of the legacy that you left and the way the organization has developed, I hope. Yeah, very much so. Extremely happy to walk through that Automate show and just say, oh my gosh, look at the size of this. I think one of Jeff's greatest accomplishments has been the reshaping and reforming of the Automate Trade Show. The robotics show has been around for decades. Frankly, to a point it was getting stale. We were starting to lose exhibitors. It was at a point where there was actually some proposals to sell the show or cancel the show, and Jeff vehemently disagreed with that approach. But to his credit, he not only disagreed with it, but he doubled down and put his energy and effort into it and led a whole team that totally reshaped the Automate show to make it what it is today, which is one of the best shows literally in the world for factory automation. We've gone from approximately 40,000 square feet to pretty close to 400,000 square feet. We've gone from 3,000 attendees to over 30,000 attendees. It's been quite a remarkable turnaround. Jeff has tirelessly worked to promote the industry and to further the industry to get robotics and automation noticed on a global stage. We opened a A3 Mexico office. We became active in China. We've grown the association significantly. We're up to 1,280 company members, I believe. We've got so many good people, so much talent, and um, I'm very proud to lead this team. I don't think that there's an organization that's having a bigger impact on increase of productivity, on creating jobs through automation than A3. It's an organization that creates tremendous network. You talk to other A3 people, they'll tell you some of the best friends they made in their life were at A3. The biggest thing that A3 has been able to do is that it's made automation accessible for anyone, providing education or simply by connecting people with the right people to make that successful application happen. I think it's just incredible to see how much has been achieved in the beginning by a few and is now being achieved in, in such bigger ways by so many. The legacy of A3, I think right now, is, is, a, is a bit undetermined, but when you see the response to the trade show and uh, the membership growth and the new activities and the uh, investment that the association can make in the future in an industry that wasn't really supposed to be an industry in the beginning, I'm happy to say that for me to sit back now and watch what's grown to be a viable trade association is a big accomplishment. I think about that number, 
50 years, how long this association has been around. And I think about the impact robotics and automation have had on industries like manufacturing and logistics. And then I think about what's happening today. Application of robotics and AI are going to help solve problems like finding cures for rare cancers, helping improve the environment, and dealing with issues related to hunger and affordable housing. It's going to transform our lives for the better. And that's where A3 comes in. And we're just getting started.